Hello again and welcome to part 5 of the Astronomy Shed Complete Mountain Scope Setup. And yeah, it is getting a bit like um, the Jaws series. And just when you thought it was safe to set your mount up, I come along and throw in a little spanner in the works. So what are we going to cover this time? Well, we're going to cover something that not a lot of people know about, but it's quite probably quite a few people that suffer from it. And it's something called cone error. Now, first of all, let me just show you on the mount, I'm using uh, a little prop, what cone error is. Right, just for a couple of moments I want you to assume that this piece of drain pipe is actually your telescope um, and your dovetail and everything. And as you can see we don't spare any expense in the props for these productions. Now under normal circumstances a telescope is fitted to a dovetail and then fitted to your mount like so. And everything should be all nice and square and level. But one place where you may not be exact is in this axis. Your scope and your dovetail and the relationship between those and your mount may be out a little bit, like so. And obviously we're greatly exaggerating this movement. But this is what causes cone errors. So let's just go over to a diagram and we'll explain it a little bit further. Okay, onto our diagrams, and these diagrams aren't 100% technically correct, but what they do do is they help to simplify the actions that are going on and help you to understand why the cone error has the effect that it has. Now, in a perfectly aligned system, if we assume that the arrow is our mount and the red arc is the tracking arc of the actual mount, we can also assume that the blue line is the telescope's tracking line because everything's set up, everything's parallel and everything's square. So if we then move on to a situation where there are stars, you can see that here's the mount, this is the tracking arc of the mount and this is the tracking arc of the telescope again. And we go to a star here and we go to a star there. The mount knows exactly where the telescope is pointing because they're acting as one. Now, if we go to a situation where we have a cone error, you can see that the arc of the mount is now no longer parallel with the arc of the telescope. So we can move to one star and that will align perfectly well. But when we move over to the other side of the arc, you can see that we've now got a discrepancy. And this is similar to the effects that can be caused by cone error and it can have effect, an effect on go-tos and, and such like. And basically that's that's how it all works. So next let's look at curing it. Right, unfortunately I don't have a standard Skywatcher Vixen style dovetail to show you. But if you do have one of those style dovetails, you may have wondered why there are two bolts, one on each side of your ring fixing bolt, and those for are for adjusting cone error. Now on my dovetail, which is a Los Mandy style dovetail, which is wider, like so, they don't normally come with a cone adjustment bolt because they're made to fit a variety of different scopes, they're an upgrade more than anything else, and so they can't really say what the ring spacings are going to be. So with mine, what I did is I drilled each side of my scope fixing bolt, my ring fixing bolt, I drilled an, a 4mm hole and then tapped it with an M5 thread and in there I now have two stainless steel grub screws that are socket headed and I've done that on each end of my dovetail and that allows me to adjust out the cone error. So you can either make the modification yourself like I've done or another way that you can do it is to use shims and you place the shims between your dovetail and your ring on whichever end the adjustment's needed. Now a really good material for making these shims is the Pepsi Cola or Coca-Cola type cans, the sort that you, you, you know, when, you, when you've got kids you sort of pick the can up and crush it and show how strong you are, you know the really thin aluminium type. They are very, very good for doing that because they're, they're a very thin material and it's, it's, you know, it just takes more time and everything using shims and this, if you can get it done, is definitely, uh, you know, it's a, it's a much better upgrade really. Right, so where do we go from here? Well, 
Firstly, we've levelled our mount and it, on this occasion it is important that you've, you've took your time to level that mount because we're going to be using our level at a later stage further up the chain so you don't want to introduce any inaccuracies at this lower point so like I said just take your time over that. Now it will also help if you roughly polar align. Now when I say roughly polar align what I mean is just try and get Polaris as near to the centre of the field of view as you can in your polar scope. We're not actually polar aligning, all it is is that we know that we're pointing in the right direction and it'll make Polaris easier to find in the scope when we come to make our adjustments. And with reference to Polaris, you can perform this procedure in the daytime, works exactly the same. Uh, all you do is substitute Polaris for an object that's on the horizon, be it a tree or a building or whichever. The procedure will work for you exactly the same. So from now on in this tutorial, when I refer to Polaris, just substitute that for your daytime objects if you want to do it in the daytime. So let's get on with it. Right, so what's next? Well, we need to fit either a reticule eyepiece to the scope or my preference is for a webcam. And what I do is my imaging software that I use is called SharpCap. That actually has a reticule that you can switch on and off. Uh, not all imaging software has that. But you can do a Google for a piece of software called Owl's Reticule. And it's actually a little program that will overlay or superimpose a reticule over a webcam image. So you can do it that way. Now what we need to do is once we've got that webcam connected or the reticule eyepiece is this. Firstly, we need to loosen the right ascension clutch and we need to rotate in right ascension until the weight bar is roughly parallel with the ground and then use your level. Place your level on your weight bar and adjust until it's exactly level. Once you've done that and you've locked your clutch, take your, your level again and just double check Make sure that you haven't knocked it out while you've been locking that clutch up. Sometimes you can get that little bit of movement. At this point, what we now do is go to your clock, your right ascension clock on your mount, and set that to zero. Just turn it over until you've got a zero in there. Next, what we need to do is, using either your webcam or your, your reticule eyepiece, we next need to get Polaris right in the centre of that reticule. Now the only adjustments that you're allowed to make at this point is in declination, like this, or using the azimuth adjustments on your mount itself. Do not touch RA, you just can't touch RA at this point. Once you've got Polaris right in that centre of the field of view and right in the middle of your, of your reticule, what we need to do next is this. Loosen RA again, rotate back through 180 degrees, like so. Now remember, we set this clock at zero, so the opposite of zero, which would be 180 degrees, is 12. So we can then set that clock to 12 and lock. Now at this point, I would use again the level, just place it on there and make sure, you know, just that you haven't got some inaccuracy somewhere. If it isn't level, just take a little bit of time and again, level it. Right, we now need to get Polaris into the middle of that, that reticule again. But the thing is this time you cannot use your azimuth adjusters. All you can use now is declination. So you can use your finder, um, you know, or maybe you'll get lucky and it actually comes into the field of view. Lock up on Polaris. Now if Polaris is right in the middle of the reticule, you don't have any corners, you have nothing to do there. And um, that's it, you're completed. If you find that Polaris is either A, out of the field of view, or it's over to one side, then we need to correct, we've got a cone error. Now if it's out of the field of view, obviously you need to use your finder, that'll just give you a wider field of view. And, you know, to sort of weigh up which direction we need to go in. And first of all, again, I would use your declination. Make sure you're writing declination. And lock. Now the next thing we need to do is obviously we need to move it from side to side. Now the way we do that is this, look through your finder or if you're looking through your webcam, press your telescope on either side and watch the image. So if we press on this side and Polaris now moves nearer to the centre of the reticule, then we know that we need to move this part of the telescope outwards. And the way we do that is to use the adjustment screws. 
Now what we do is we slacken off the bolt holding the, the mounting ring and just tighten the two grub screws a little to push the scope outwards that way. We make these adjustments using the methods that we described earlier. Now what you want to do is you need to move Polaris only half the distance back. You do not want to move it into the centre of the reticule. You need to move it half the distance because you will then transfer that measurement back to the other side. So what we do next, once you've made an adjustment and you think you've got it right, next you can use your azimuth adjusters. Use your azimuth adjusters, bring Polaris right into the middle of the reticule again. Once you've done that, again, back through 180 degrees, like so. Again, using declination only, get Polaris back either into the field of view or again repeat what we've just done. You can't touch the azimuth bolts again at this point, so it's just declination. If you're now in the middle, you've cured your corner on the first go. If not, it's the same thing, make the adjustments. So remember, after you've centred Polaris using your azimuth bolts, you do not centre using your azimuth bolts when you've moved to the other side. Then you need to use your adjusters because we're centering on one side, we're adjusting on the other side. And it gets a little bit difficult to explain, I know. And you will probably have to perform the procedure a number of times going backwards and forwards. Once you've got to a stage where you can move through 180 degrees and only using declination, you can get Polaris either right in the middle of your reticule or very very close to it because it is it's quite difficult and there are some fine movements there then you know that you've corrected your, your cone adjustment now to give you an idea um, you, the adjustments are, are, are rather fine uh, on my little grub screws I found that I was making turns of a quarter of a turn and that was that was like moving it quite a lot so like I said it's, it's moved half the distance Come back over, check again, recenter, and that's all you can do is just keep repeating the procedure side to side, adjust until you've got it exactly right on both sides. And that's about it for this one. So once again, thanks for watching.